Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Spike Sunday, a weekly series where we take a look at established standard or modern decks and this week we're taking a look at Jeskai Control in Modern. So let's take a look at the entire deck list, starting out with our 1-drops, where we have the classic 1-drops in the Jeskai Colors, 4 copies of Path to Exile, which can exile opposing creatures, giving the exiled creatures controller an extra basic land, 4 copies of Serum Visions, which lets us draw a card and then scry 2, so gives us some card selection to smooth out our draws, and then 4 copies of Lightning Bolt, great removal spell that can also go to the face when we're trying to close out the game. And then moving on to our 2 drops, we have a single copy of Negate to counter non-creature spells, as well as an additional copy in the sideboard. 2 copies of Search for Ascanta, which gives us some card selection and then transforms into Ascanta the Sunken Ruin, which is our main card advantage engine, as well as Teferi Hero of Dominaria of course. Then we have 4 copies of Snapcaster Mage, which is great in this deck where we have all those cheap instants and sorceries which we can flash back to get some value and uh, helps us close out the game once we turn the corner. Then we have 2 copies of Lightning Helix, nice removal spell that can also gain us some life, so shines against burn decks and other aggressive creature decks. Then 2 copies of Electrolyze, which can split 2 damage as well as drawing us a card, so shines against 1 toughness creatures, where we might be able to pick off multiple creatures as well as drawing a card for the ultimate 3 for 1, and also great against cards like Lingering Souls that can otherwise be problematic. Then we have some sweeper effects in the main deck, we have one copy of Wrath of God and one copy of Supreme Verdict, and the reason we're splitting these is because of a meddling mage out of the humans deck, so we don't want to have too many sweepers with the same name, otherwise meddling mage can shut them all down. And of course there is a small upside as well with Wrath of God against creatures with regenerate, against for example the elf deck with Azuri, that could be relevant, against the Throne the Last Troll out of the sideboard, so it's not like Wrath of God is all downside as opposed to Supreme Verdict. Then we also have the full 4 copies of Cryptic Command, which is a very versatile counterspell, being able to counter something and draw a card, and then you also have the modes of being able to tap down the opponent's creatures or bounce a permanent, so very versatile there. Then we also have two copies of the Fairy here of Dominaria, which has been great in Jeskai Shells. A 5 mana Planeswalker comes in with 4 loyalty and then can plus 1 to draw a card and untap 2 lands, so that lets us keep up our interaction, whether it be counter spells or uh, one of our many removal spells. And then the minus 3 is also great since that lets us answer problematic permanence, and then the minus 8 is also game winning. Then we have one copy of Secure the Wastes as a nice win condition, being able to make X11 white soldier creature tokens at instant speed and can maybe even flash it back with a Snapcaster Mage later. And then we also have three copies of Logic Knot, which I maybe should have mentioned when discussing the two drops, as a Delph card with double blue and X, so we can remove X cards from our graveyard as well to help us pay for the Logic Knot's cost, and then we get to counter target spell unless its controller pays X. So in combination with all our cheap spells and our fetch lands, we will often be able to use a Logic Knot as a hard counter, which is great since in the late game it's not going to lose any value as opposed to something like a Mana Leak. Then going over the mana base, we have a total of 8 fetch lands, 4 copies of Flooded Strand and 4 copies of Scalding Tarn, which can get our dual lands where we have 2 copies of Hallowed Fountain and 2 copies of Steam Vents, as well as a single copy of Sacred Foundry, and then a number of basic lands, 3 basic islands, 1 basic plains and 1 basic mountain, that we can also search up with our 1 copy of Field of Ruin to answer opposing non-basic lands, and then we also have a 1 of Glacial Fortress, which comes into play untapped if we control a plains or an island. We also have a 1 of Sulphur Falls, which comes into play untapped if we control an island or a mountain. Then we also have a 1 of Copy of Spire Bluff Canal, which comes into play untapped if it's one of our first three lands, and it's uh, great at helping us cast Serum Visions and Lightning Bolt on turn 1, which are the most important ones to play on turn 1, since you don't really want to use Path to Exile on turn 1, since that'll ramp the opponent. And then you have three copies of Celestial Colonnade as well as an alternate win condition, being able to turn it into a 4-4 creature with Flying and Vigilance is great. Then let's go over the sideboard where we have a whole bunch of one-offs. We have Engineered Explosives to answer problematic permanents, also great against tokens. We have Surgical Extraction as Graveyard Hate, since we can't really afford to run Rest in Peace in this deck because of the four Snapcaster Mages and the two Search for Ascantas. Instead we get access to Surgical Extraction, which we can also flash back with Snapcaster Mage. We have Alpine Moon against Tron decks and Scapeshift decks. We have Dispel against Instance, 
Celestial Purge can exile red or black permanents, so it can also answer cards like Blood Moon or Planeswalkers like Liliana of the Veil, so very versatile there as well. We have Negate to have an additional copy against non-creature spells. Stony Silence, great against any artifact-based deck. A Damping Sphere, great against Storm decks and Tron decks. We've got a Rune Halo, which is also quite versatile. Can uh, name something like Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle against Scapeshift decks. Can name a Bogle against a Bogle deck. And can also bring it in against various creature matchups. We have a Wear Tear to deal with artifacts and enchantments. A Geist of St. Traft, which can also be a nice clock against combo decks or opposing control decks. Vendillion Click also shines against combo and control decks, where you can take a look at the opponent's hand while pressuring them. Is it Static Caster shines against one toughness creatures and tokens. Lyra Dawnbringer can be a great win condition against decks that don't have removal for us after sideboard as a 5-5 creature with flying first strike and lifelink. And the reason we're playing Lyra Dawnbringer over something like a Baneslayer Angel is because we do have the Geist of St. Traft, which does make an Angel token. And it's not inconceivable that in some matchups we bring in both Geist and Lyra Dawnbringer. So the plus one plus one and lifelink bonus for Angels could be relevant. And Lara Dawnbringer is also legendary, so it dodges Cast Down, which is a card that could uh, see more play modern now. And then we also have a Elspeth Sun's Champion, which shines against any creature matchups, especially green decks that don't have a lot of flyers, where the 1 1 tokens are going to take over the board. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and the sand looks good, so we'll keep. Got a nice mix of removal for creatures, interaction for non creatures, and Ascanta for card advantage. Turn one Temple Garden into Birds of Paradise. All right, so some sort of creature deck. It's good news for the Supreme Verdict. Here, I think we play the Scalding Turn, which is probably going to get a Steam Vance end of turn. Could have also played Tapped Hallowed Fountain and then play Mountain a Lightning Helix something. Ooh, blue mana. Is this a Sahili? Nope, and Domri Rad. All right, so. Can be an issue here. Reveals Voice of Resurgence. Yeah, that's a pretty good one against us as well. All right, so not what we wanted to see on turn two after seeing the turn one Birds of Paradise. I guess we play the Scalding Tarn, which is also going to need to get a white source so we can Supreme Verdict. And I'll keep up Negate Helix here over playing the Ascanta. Question is, do we Helix the bird right now? Our opponent's probably going to lead by playing Voice of Resurgence. So then we're kind of locked into helixing the bird in response, so we might as well do it now. Could also helix Domery, but we're a few turns away from Snapcaster helix, but that might still be necessary. Sure. So let's get the Hallowed Fountain. Suppose we could have just played the one from hand if this was our plan. Helix Domery, say go. Should still be able to kill Domery before he reaches enough loyalty to survive the helix. And a Hunt Master of the Fells, okay. The Verdict can still clean that up, but it's gonna hurt. So let's play Ascanta. Tapped Hallowed Fountain. And then next turn we're kind of locked into Snapcaster Helix on Domri. And then we can uh, Supreme Verdict, so... Could still be okay here, depending on what our opponent does. Alright, at least uh, Domri didn't find him any creatures this turn. So we take 4, down to 15. And yeah, it looks like our opponent's not going to play anything to transform the Huntmaster. So Ravager's going to deal 2 to us. And if we now Snapcaster Helix, the Ravager will transform back. Uh, we'll keep the planes on top, I think. So we could Verdict now, but then Domri's still going to stay in play. So I think we have to Snapcaster Helix the Domri. And then hope to stabilize next turn with the Supreme Verdict. So we're back up to 16 at least. And the Ravager will transform back, which is actually good for us given the Verdict. Hopefully our opponent uses removal on the Snapcaster Mage so they can keep attacking with the Huntmaster. Or they could just attack with the Wolf token. But we're still gonna block and I don't think it's suspicious that we do. Alright, opponent's going to play around a sweeper effect here and they're going to transform Ravager. Definitely want to put that in the graveyard. Pick up a Spire Bluff. Alright, so we can Teferi, keep up Negate, but Teferi 
isn't super hot on this board since if we minus on Ravager then Teferi dies to the wolf and if we plus then Teferi still dies to the Ravager so yeah we're pretty much forced to Supreme Verdict here and our opponent wisely didn't commit any more creatures to the board. Alright so we're back to square one but our opponent does have a few more cards in hand than we do but we do get Teferi and Toscanta going soon so could still be okay here at 14 life. I'm not sure what their blue mana is for, so that's making me a little nervous. So there's a voice we knew about into a Loxodon Smiter. So the Fairy Plus is not going to be enough to survive. How about Snapcaster? Yeah, we can Snapcaster Verdict. So I think I like that here. I think that beats uh, playing the Fairy and having it die. Opponent still gets their elemental token, which is going to be annoying if uh, they can follow up with more creatures. The hope is that we get to play Teferi and have it live for a turn. And Bloodbraid Elf, yep. Revealing a mass hysteria. All creatures have haste. Alright, that's a spicy addition. So they can get in for five. And all creatures having haste is pretty scary. So yeah, this Teferi is not long for the world. We'll see what we do with them. Cryptic Command, that's actually a good one. Since we can counter something, bounce the elemental. So we're one mana short of Teferi and keep up Cryptic. So I think we keep up Cryptic for now. And try to counter something, bounce the elemental. Alright, that's a good one to counter. And I think I prefer bouncing the elemental over drawing a card. But the Voice of Resurgence, probably the bait spell. But we get to convert our negate on Domri, which is nice. So this was a good turn for us. Still go down to 6, but for opponents playing Domri, they might be light on actual burn spells. Which would make sense, also the Mass Hysteria indicates more uh, creatures. So we'll see here. Serum Visions. I guess that's better than a random card, although let's see, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We still get to flip Ascanta regardless. So I'll keep the Serum Visions and flip Ascanta. And then we get to play Serum Visions. And all right, Lightning Helix on top, nice. And we get to draw that with the Fairy. And then untap two lands. So we might be in business here. Helix for the Blood Braid goes a long way. And can't counter the Loxel and Smiter, so that resolves. Let's see if they go after our life total or if they go for Teferi. They probably attack us at this point. Yeah, let's see Helix the Elf. Alright, so down to five. Point's got one card in hand, so. Just need to find an answer to this Loxel and Smiter, so let's. Serum Visions before we draw with the Fairy. Alright, pick up Bolts and Electrolyze. So, bottom Flood Strand, top Electrolyze. So, we could have also minus the Fairy on the Smiter, but now we can afford to plus. And then Bolt and Electrolyze. And I guess we do that now. So that, uh, I guess we can Electrolyze first. So that we get to untap an extra land, essentially. Alright, pick up another Electrolyze, so now I wished we had done 2-2 two, two the Smiter, but that's okay. Finish it off with the Bolts. And then untap two lands, and then we can still Ascanta or use our Logic Knot. Alright, another Domery, so I guess we will Logic Knot that. And yeah, we can Logic Knot for enough. And I'll keep up two mana just to represent having something in hand. Although we could have made the argument for using our two mana here, so future Logic Knots have more fuel in the graveyard. But the things we delved, we won't get to flashback with the Snapcaster anyway, so that doesn't matter. Alright, let's uh, activate the Fairy. 
think this is where we main phase the Ascanta so we can untap it. Although we also get to untap the Colonnade, which is already pretty good. So I guess we just play Colonnade and then say go untapping Colonnades to keep back an extra blocker, just in case. Alright, Lightning Mauler, that's fine. So 2-1 haste thanks to the Mass Hysteria, and our opponent scoops it up. Alright, so we get to go to game 2 against a Naya, although there was also Blue Splash in there. Creature based deck, so I'm imagining Elspeth is going to be good, Lyra is going to be good. Uh, Celestial Purge, let's see, most of the opponent's creatures were green and white, but Bloodbraid Elf and Huntmaster died to it. Um, I guess Purge could be okay. Explosives is going to be a bit clunky. Static Caster doesn't seem great. Uh, Ruined Halo could be okay, but is also kind of medium. I think we keep in the one negates for Domery, but I don't think I want a second one. So we bring in three cards. What do we take out? I like the sweepers. I like the removal spells. So there's not much I want to take out, actually. Uh, I could see cutting a secure the wastes. Now that we bring in two more win conditions. And then maybe shave some cryptics, which are weak against Loxel and Smiters and Voice of Resurgence. Makes sense. All right, let's try this. All right, so we're on the draw. This hand's not great. First interaction, turn three with Electrolyze is a bit slow. Don't think we can keep this. All right, this is better. And I'll keep the Colonnade on top. So we have white mana for the path. Right, no birds this time. I guess I forgot that their opponent was playing Birds of Paradise while sideboarding, but I still don't think we wanted the uh, it Static Caster. I think we play the Colonnade, get that out of the way and have access to path. And then next turn we can Serum Visions while keeping a path or double serum visions. And yeah, I guess the Celestial Purge also deals with Domri Rod, so I'm happy we brought it in. Untap Sacred Foundry for Scavenging Ooze, that's okay. Not the most threatening creature. And yeah, I think we keep all the creature removal we can. And I don't think we need a fifth land quite yet. Top, bottom. And then I guess we can serum visions again since I don't need to pass the Scavenging Ooze right away. Sure. And then, yeah, I'll keep the Snapcaster Mage. I guess I might want to keep the Flood Strand on top so we can pass plus Helix next turn. And if we don't have to, then we don't have to fetch away the Snapcaster. Sure. Let's put the Flood Strand on top first. So next turn we have the option of Path plus Helix. And if we don't need to Path plus Helix, then the turn after we'll have Snapcaster Helix. So I don't hit our spot here. Hoping to dodge a Domri this turn. That would be somewhat annoying. Yep, there he is. Pluses, but did not reveal anything. Okay. So let's play Flooded Strands. And then we can take two from the Scavenging Ooze. Although we can need to pass the Ooze before we can snap cast our Helix, otherwise I just exile the Helix with the Ooze. So that's kind of rough. I guess we say go for now and then wait it out. Since we don't need to Helix Domri right away anyway. Domri reveals Bloodbraid Elf. Yeah, that's a good card. And they get to play the Elf. And Cascade into a Lightning Mauler, which will also have haste paired with the Ooze. So we'll let the Bloodbraid resolve. And now we have to do some thinking. So if we Helix Domri right now, we could untap Snapcaster Helix Domri again, get rid of it and have a Snapcaster in play, or we could try and deal with the creatures first, Helix Path this turn, next turn we'll have Path again, but then Domri is still in play. I guess we could answer Domri with the Fairy at some point, which is also an option. So what's better? I think I prefer getting rid of Domri here. So I'll take the damage from the creatures, and then Helix Domri, Snap Helix in our turn, so the Scavenging Ooze doesn't mess with it. So a pretty big hit here, down to 11, but uh, Helix will help us stabilize. And then the hope is they don't have a second Domri, since that would be unfortunate. So here we'll fetch a Plains, as to not take too much damage. And then Snap Helix 
and at least a snap can block a creature, so that's nice. And now we do have the fairy into double path, so that's actually pretty powerful, since we get to take full advantage of the two untapped lands. So hopefully our opponent doesn't commit a ton of creatures out of fear of a supreme verdict, and then we get to get them with the Teferi into double path. Since, yeah, from the opponent's point of view, committing more creatures is definitely a risky proposition. And there's Mass Hysteria into Thalia. That's going to mess with our plan. So the Scavenging Ooze stays back. So if we trade for Bloodbraid, the next turn we can still path Thalia, path Ooze, and be okay. All right, so we'll take four down to 12. And Elspeth, all right, that's a nice long-term plan. So yeah, I think we just double path here so we can play the Steam Vents tapped. And I think we're fine letting the opponent untap. Hopefully they respect the sweeper effect, although we did have the untapped land, so if we had a sweeper, we could have cast it. So Silverblade Paladin. So let's see what it bonds with. Bonds with Thalia. All right, so I guess we don't have to path the Paladin since we can just path Thalia and then it will lose double strike. So the Ooze can get in for four damage this turn. I think uh, we just path the Ooze here. And then if we can find an untapped land for Elspeth, the game's almost over. And otherwise the fairy's pretty good too. So uh, the scavenging ooze munches on a few more cards before getting exiled. And then we take four since the silver blade paladin isn't paired up. Come on, land. Nice. So yeah, Elspeth should be pretty good here. Plus, make some tokens. And I'm happy chum blocking. Tokens also have haste, but definitely not attacking. All right, second mass hysteria. It's not what the opponent wants to draw. Silver blade gets in. Yeah, I'll just double block it. We haven't seen any instant speed creatures from the opponent that they can pair with the paladin. I guess I could triple block to play around a spot removal spell. Sure. All right, paladin down. Plus Elspeth. Play the fairy. Plus the fairy. Perfect. And now we get to untap and have access to cryptic command. Again, just gonna play extra conservative here with our soldier tokens since there's no reason not to. Since Elspeth Ultimate's probably gonna win us the game on the spot. Alright, point says go. No reason to use cryptic. Logic not as good insurance. Activate Elspeth plus the fairy. Play a land, say go. And then next turn we get to ultimate Elspeth if we want to. Or we can plus for another turn. And Domri is going to get countered. Suppose we can use a Logic Knot first and still keep our Path to Exile in the graveyard. And still keep up Cryptic Command. And alright, opponent's gonna pack it in. So on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And the sand seems great. We've got a fetch land to go with the Logic Knot as well. Two nice removal spells and a snapcaster to get back whatever's the best card we need. We'll lead with a colonnade so we can turn to Flooded Strand and have a access to our logic knot. Alright, I tapped Fairy Conclave from the opponent, so it could be a Fairy's deck, could be a Jeskai Ascendancy combo deck, could be... I've even seen this played in Merfolk before. Still gonna play the Flooded Strand over Canal just because that keeps up an extra mana for Delve on logic knot. And then we can play the Spire Bluff next turn. All right, there's a Mutavolt, so it looks to be Merfolk. I guess it could still be Fairies. And here we want to get a Steam Vents, I think. And now we get to Serum Visions. And then play the Spire Bluff. So either way, this looks like a creature deck and not a combo deck. So we are looking for removal spells, Snapcaster Mages. Don't really need more lands, and yeah, I'll keep both of those. Play Spire Bluff, say go. And yeah, 
with uh, three removal spells and three snapcaster mages. Opponent's gonna have a hard time. And then those snapcaster mages are gonna be pretty good win conditions as well. So the game's only three turns in, but I already like our chances. Second Muta Vault, and Point's gonna activate one of them. Eh, a lot of attack, and then probably use the Lightning Helix. Point says go. Play this untapped, so we have Snapcaster Helix at the ready. There's an island into Ether Vial. All right, so strongly indicates Merfolk. Mutavolt gets activated, let it attack, and then Snapcaster Helix again. And now we have something to beat down with. Alright, sweet. So let's get in there. We have Bolt Snap Bolt now. So we're actually going to be able to burn our opponent out pretty quickly here. Alright, Chalice of the Void on one. Alright, that's definitely worth a Logic Knot. I guess we could just use four mana to counter this, or we could delve one to keep up Bolt and Path. I think we just pay the one more, since I doubt our opponent's going to uh, play a relevant one drop here. So Chalice of the Void is interesting. Could still be played in Merfolk, technically. But now I'm less sure, since we haven't seen a single Merfolk yet, so... Let's get in there with the Snapcaster. We also have Colonnade, that's online if we find one more land. Also have Snapcaster Logic Knot in case they present another Chalice of the Void. So we've got most things covered. Second Fairy Conclave. And alright, it's gonna get fired up. I'll let it attack. I think we use a Bolt so we can also uh, Snapcaster Bolt end of turn to get some value out of it. And I do want to try and close out this game as quickly as possible. Right, Point down to 13, untap, and I'm just going to beat down with the colonnade here. So we're hitting for 8 while keeping up Path Exile. Alright, let's see what they can violin end of turn here. And it's a Coral Helm Commander. So it is a merfolk. It's not a typical merfolk out of a merfolk deck. So they can level this up to give it flying, make it bigger. And our opponent has 4 mana, so they could level this up all the way to a 4-4, giving other merfolk plus 1 plus 1. But we still have the path to exile anyway. And yep, they're going to start leveling up to play around another bolt. But that's not going to work out very well in the face of path. Opponent's going to stay back. All path, and that's probably going to do it. Alright, let's fire up the colonnade, and that should do it. Alright, so I think we're up against Merfolk, but it's definitely a strange build of Merfolk. So one of the best cards against Merfolk is Engineered Explosives. I don't hate Lara Dombringer. Um, Elspeth is kind of medium, since her opponent does play lots of island walking Merfolk. So they can just attack past Elspeth. So I don't know if Elspeth is uh, where we want to be. Is it Static Caster can clean up some number of one toughness creatures, but most Merfolk are two toughness. Uh, Cleek can be okay just as a way to pressure them in the air while taking a look at their hand, but definitely not amazing. Um, don't think we want Ruined Halo just because their threat diversity is pretty varied. I guess we did see Chalice of the Void, so maybe we do want to bring in a Wear Terror, which can also answer stuff like uh, Ether Vial or Spreading Seas, so it's probably worth it. Then what don't I like in the matchup? Counter spells are pretty bad, since our opponent plays Ether Vial, so I definitely want to cut some number of either Logic Knots or Cryptic Commands. And Negates is also pretty bad, although we did see that Chalice of the Void, which makes me want to maybe keep more counter spells than usual. But I think Negate's still going to be one of the worst ones. And I think we just shave some number of Cryptics. And then I'm not sure if 
static caster or clique are better than an extra cryptic or logic knot. Secure the waste is also not amazing. So I could also see cutting that since it doesn't outrace the island walking merfolk and doesn't block very well. So I guess we can make room for the clique. I guess it is okay against something like Akira, Great Glass Spinner, since it can kind of take down the shield. I guess I'll shave another cryptic. Try this. Alright, we've got a one lander, but we are on the draw and we have double serum visions. And the rest of our hands, okay. Path is good. Electrolyze down the line is good. So I think this is a keep. But definitely a relatively sketchy one. They do have the turn one vial. Alright, second fairy is not what we wanted to draw. Probably the worst draw in our deck. And the Chalice of the Void on one. Yikes. Alright, luckily we found Flood of Strand, so we do get to wear tear the chalice but yeah chalice on one after we keep tap land double serum visions could have gone pretty poorly could fire off the wear tear now so the consideration of wear tear is if our opponent has a counter spell we want to fire it off now if they have a second chalice then we probably want to wait so what's more likely i think i want to fire off the wear tear now since a counter spell would be pretty bad and blow up the chalice. Alright. Opponent could have also had a curse catcher, by the way, with either vial. But that would have been uh, good no matter what. Alright, spreading seas on Celestial Colonnade, that's acceptable. Didn't get to live the dream of fusing Werther to blow up the spreading seas, but that's okay. At least we get to play magic. So let's see visions. Look for lands. And uh, Bolt is okay, but I think again we just want lands. So we'll top the islands, bottom the lightning bolts, and then play another Serum Visions. And drawing the islands, and then I think we bottom the Snapcasters even though they are okay. I guess the reasoning for Snapcaster is if our opponent has second spreading seas on the steam vents, then we don't get to do anything. Well, if we keep Snapcaster, we can Snapcaster Serum Visions. I guess keeping one Snapcaster is okay. Play Islands, say go. Got a Vile Activation, putting Silvergill into play. And yep, there's another Spreading Sea, so glad we kept the Snapcaster on top. Otherwise, we would not get to do anything. So the best card we can draw by far is uh, Engineered Explosives. Clears both Spreading Seas, deals with the Silvergill and potential other two drops. But yeah, this is going to be an uphill battle. Spreading Seas is definitely good against a three-color deck. So let's Snapcaster, Serum Visions. So Field of Ruins is a good draw, and then I think we keep the Scalding Turn on top, bottom Necryptic, and then play Field of Ruins, say go, and then Field of Ruin and Scalding Turn can kind of fix our mana. But we will take a beating in the meantime, Luckily, they didn't file anything in end of turn, so might not take a ton of damage. So Mutavolt's activated. And I think here we block the Silvergill, since... Alright, maybe your opponent has a Lord anyway, and doesn't matter. Yep, so there's Lord of Atlantis. Their creatures have Island Walk, so we can't block. Take 6, down to 7. And our opponent has 3 mana up, which could be any number of counter spells. So we have a few options here. We can use a Field of Ruin on the Mutavolt to get a basic, which could get a Plains for Path to Exile. And then we could still have Scalding Turn up to get a second White Source end of turn. For the Wrath of God, question is, are we going to die in the meantime? So I think here the play is to play Scalding Turn and then just say go. And the plan's probably going to be to Path, the Lord, and Field of Ruin, the Mutavolts, and hope we don't die. Alright, opponent moves to combat. Attacks with both, which heavily implies they have another Lord here to violin, otherwise we can just block the Lord. So yeah, there's a Vile activation. So we could respond by pathing the Lord of Atlantis, but I think I would rather try and path the Lord they vial in and then try and block the Lord 
think that makes sense. The other option is to electrolyze the Lord of Atlantis instead. But that means we don't get to Path or we don't get to Field of Ruin. And a counter spell kind of messes with either scenario, so that doesn't really matter. So I think we let this resolve and then try to Path. So yeah, there's Master of the Pearl Trident. So your opponent's threatening to kill us here, attacking for seven. So let's Field of Ruin the Mutavault and get our planes. And then try to path the master. And if they have a counter spell, we're probably dead. If it's a spell pierce, we can pay for it. Uh, it's a deprive. Yep, yeah, that's gonna do it since can't uh, play our other removal. All right, so a quick start from the opponent, backed up by some spreading seas, and the chalice was good enough to get there in game two. So let's see if we can do better in game three. So do we maybe want to negate anyway, just to answer Chalice and Spreading Seas? Maybe that's worth it. And then cut. Maybe want to ferry. Don't want to go too low on uh, kind of card advantage engines, but we still have the Ascantas, which are going to be pretty good. And I still don't think we want Ruined Halo. Yeah, I think this is fine. Would like to be on the play. And this is a sketchy one. No white mana when we have Supreme Verdict Path in hand and Helix, so we don't really get to cast anything in this hand. All right, let's go to six. And this one doesn't have any lands in it, so this is gonna be a rough one. Wow, okay. So can we keep a five card hand with no lands in it? Do have a double bolt? Nope, let's go to four. All right, first keepable hand. And do we keep a wear tear? I don't think we can afford to hedge against Chalice or Spreading Seas when uh, we're on a four card hand. So let's play Colonnades, they go. So it's gonna take something special to still win this one. Opponent overextending into a Supreme Verdict, for example. This is also one of the matchups where Supreme Verdict is a lot better than Wrath of God because of the opponent's counter spells. Let's get a Steam Vents before we scry. I guess we could have also gotten a Mountain there, but we might want a double Serum Visions here. I guess we'll keep the helix and bottom the flow strand since we're just looking for action and serum visions again. And yeah, explosives is a good one. So I'll bottom the steam vents, stop the explosives. So now we have both an answer to a chalice and an answer to multiple two drops. And there's a Lord of Atlantis. So this is a funny balance where we have explosives, which we want to play on two but we want the opponent to play more 2-drops to get more value out of it, which means we don't really want to bolt the Lore of Atlantis, but we also don't want to take too much damage, so this is a, a very delicate balance. I think we play land, say go, not show them the explosives yet. I'm fine taking 2 from the Lord, hope they play another 2-drop, and then we can go from there. There's a Mutavault, a Lord attacks, I'll take it. Since the opponent's also going to be playing around stuff like Supreme Verdict, so they're never going to overextend all the way. And Chalice on one. So we could kind of switch gears and just bolt the Lord of Atlantis here. Use Engineered Explosives to deal with the Chalice. I think that's fine. And then keep the Helix since that doesn't get countered by Chalice. And here we'll fetch a Sacred Foundry. Could have also not fetched, I suppose, to play around Spreading Seas a bit better. All right, pick up a Scalding Turn. So do we Explosives here? I mean, we're gonna have to deal with the Chalice at some point. Can we conceivably play this game out with the Chalice on one in play? It seems unlikely, but it could be possible if we just draw all our uh, two and three drops instead, in which case we don't have to use the Explosives on zero and we can keep it for two. So I think I'm gonna give it a turn, see what we draw, see what our opponent plays. Of course, the risk of not playing explosives right now is that our opponent has a counter spell for it, but so be it. We are going to have to make up for the last card advantage in some way, and I think that's going to involve engineered explosives killing multiple stuff. So do we fetch with the Scalding Tarn? I guess we do, since we don't really want to draw lands at this point and get a Hallowed Fountain so we can still Verdict or Wrath 
through a spreading seas. And alright, Snapcaster was a good draw since Snapcaster Helix dodges Chalice. Tectonic Edge can blow up or colonnade. Yep. And uh, I don't think we flash in the Snapcaster since we need to get value out of it. But opponent might second main a Merfolk. Yep, there's a Coral Helm again. Alright, so might be time to explosives on zero after all. So now we get to blow up explosives to clear the chalice and then still bolt a coral helm. And I think I'm fine letting the opponent on top. Mute of all that gets activated. Opponent sends both. And then bolt the coral helm. And see if they have a counter spell. And if they do, we get to main phase Snapcaster Bolt again. Alright, that works. So we take 2 down to 14. One of our better draws here would be Search for Ascanta, I think. More removal would be welcome. This looks like a Spreading Seas and our opponent's deciding what to Spreading Seas. Yep, goes for the Steam Vents. Alright, Electrolyze is not bad. So we'll say go. I think I would have gone for the Sacred Foundry since that both shuts off a red source and double white for a potential uh, sweeper. So Mutavolt attacks. I think we go for Electrolyze over Snapcaster. And that's gonna get deprived. Okay. Take 2 down to 12. And our opponent gets to replay their land for an Aether Vial. Okay, that's a way for us to make up for the lost card advantage. So our hope is that our opponent just floods out and draws a bunch of ether vials. Relic of Progenitus is an issue since that shuts off our Snapcaster Mage. So we could cast the Snapcaster in response, target Lightning Bolt. I think I like that. The other option would be to let it resolve and then hope to be able to flash back the path after they sag the relic. But if they don't sag the relic then we're not really accomplishing much. So now we've got the bolt targeted. We can let the Relic resolve, and we can cast the Bolt at any point, and if they try to sag the Relic, we can always respond by casting Bolt to their face. Serum Point doesn't do anything, end of turn will Bolt. And Serum Visions is not bad. Let Serum Visions. Point's gonna activate Relic, we'll get rid of a land. Alright, so another Snapcaster is probably not gonna be great here, although opponent might blow the Relic Anyway, in which case Snapcaster Path is pretty appealing. So I'm gonna take a small risk and keep the Snapcaster on top. Could also be that I shouldn't have played the Islands to play around another Tectonic Edge. Since now they can blow up the Sacred Foundry. Ah, opponent's gonna blow the Relic. So the Snapcaster we kept on top should be good to go. Alright, so we're somehow making a game out of it, despite the mulligan to 4. But our opponent does have 5 cards in hand and a Mute Vault, and there's Tectonic Edge. Don't think we have to path our own Snapcaster quite yet. Hmm, another Relic, that's annoying. Yep. I guess had we seen all these Relics, we could have also considered bringing in Stony Silence. Either way, let's get in for 2. And if our opponent's plan is to flash in a Lord with a Vile and block with Mute Vault, that's not gonna work. Opponent does have Vile Activation end of turn, putting in Silver Gill Adept, yep, that's one of the better ones they could have had. Get to draw a card, and it's a blocker for Snapcaster Mage. Relic exiles Sacred Foundry. Alright, so we're reduced to three lands, only one white mana, no red. So I think we need to just use Snapcaster as an Ambush Viper and hope they flash in a Lord that we can path and they don't have a counter spell for it. Alright, that worked. And I think we just blocked the Mutavolts. Alright, Search for Ascanta, not great in the face of Relic, but it does something. Improves our draw. 
can help us find the missing uh, lands. Another relic, wow. Okay then. So your opponent has triple relic despite the chalice of the void on one. That's a little suspect. So another lord coming in here. And it's gonna close out the game pretty quickly. Three power unblockable silver guild adept. Yep, our Ascanta is not gonna transform this game, that's for sure. And uh, can't keep a card we can't cast. Hope to be able to block the Lord. Opponent should be sacrificing one of these relics, I think. And if they have another Lord, we're dead here. Alright, just an attack for three. And Vendillion click. That seems okay. So does that mean we get to attack with the Snapcaster Mage? I don't think so, since if they counter the clique, then we don't have any blockers back. But we can uh, clique them on draw step. So now a relic sacrificed. Hoping to snipe another Lord here. Right, opponent's gonna vial it in. I didn't uh, take the vial into account. Right, instead it's another Silver Gill. That's acceptable. So they don't have another Lord in hand unless they drew it with the Silver Gill. Instead, double Master of Waves and a Coral Helm Commander. Those are all problems. I think we take Master, hope they play the Master, and then we top deck Supreme Verdict or uh, Wrath of God, since I don't think we can beat both Master of Waves. Silver Gill puts us to one. And our opponent picked up a Fairy Conclave from the random draw, which means they're not forced to run out the Master of Waves. And uh, no, I'll keep the path. Have to stay back with everyone. If your opponent attacks with everyone, including the Fairy Conclave, then we're dead. They might play around Settle the Wreckage. They could also vial in the Commander and activate it a bunch. But if they just attack with the Silver Guilds, we can path the Lore of Atlantis. But then we're still in trouble to the Fairy Conclave and the Master Waves. Alright, so by not attacking with the Fairy Conclave, we do get another turn here. But now I imagine our opponent will play the Master of Waves or the Commander at least. And I don't think we have outs. Instead, it's a Chalice of the Void on two. And I guess your opponent can still vial in the Coral Helm Commander end of turn. So single spot removal spell doesn't save us. Island can go to the graveyard. And we draw Scalding Turn, which I'm not going to play. Otherwise, we're dead on board. And yep, there's the Commander. And now our opponent has Commander plus Fairy which dodges a single removal spell. And that's gonna be game. All right, so still got to turn 15 after a mulligan to four. So can't complain. Opponent definitely with an interesting build of Merfolk, very controlling, but they got the job done. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and I think this is a keep. We've got our Serum Visions to smooth out our draw, Snapcaster to maybe flash it back. If we're up against a creature deck, Wrath of God to clear the board. Don't really want to see secure the waste in our opening hand typically, but here we are. I think we get a hallowed fountain, make sure we have double white. The logic not seems good here, and so is sacred foundry, so let's top foundry, top logic knot. Say go. And we could always shuffle away the sacred foundry by fetching of course. And Utopia Sprawl, turn two. So some sort of a ramp deck. All right, let's play Scalding Turn, say go. Hope to be able to counter something good with the Logic Knot. Then on turn three, we're gonna be pretty vulnerable. But then turn four, we'll have Cryptic. Eternal Witness getting back a fetch line. I think that's acceptable. I'm not gonna fight over it. And I'm also not gonna fetch end of turn since we wanna keep the Sacred Foundry on top which we can now 
play tapped. Could have also played Scalding Turn to have one extra mana for Logic Knot. But managing our life total is also important. So Eternal Witness gets in for two. Down to 15. Five mana for Acidic Slime. Alright, opponent's interested in blowing up our lands. They could also be playing Blood Moon, since Utopia Sprawl decks often do. In which case we want to make sure to get enough basic islands. So let's get basic island right now. And Logic Knots for one. So now we have Cryptic Command up, and if our opponent doesn't play anything worth countering, we can always secure the wastes for three. Scavenging Ooze could be bait, but our opponent only has one card left in hand. And it would be pretty annoying against Double Snapcaster, although I guess we do have Wrath of God as well. I guess we let Scavenging Ooze resolve, and then next turn we can Wrath of God. Take two from Witness, and do we fetch a basic, or do we... Fetch a tap land end of turn. I guess we get a tap land here. Since we do want double red. On tap, pick up a Lightning Helix. I guess Lightning Helix could change our play since now, instead of having to cast Wrath of God and tapping out, we can just Helix the Scavenging Ooze end of turn while keeping up Cryptic Command. Alright, I think that's a bit safer, all things considered. Since if we tap out for Wrath, opponent could do... Something scary in their turn. One's gonna gobble up some cards in our graveyard, that's okay. And we'll have to take the damage here from the ooze. Since otherwise, again, if we tap out for Lining Helix before damage, then opponent can second main still do something scary. Runic Armasaur. Alright, I guess this might change our plan once again as we could now just take the damage from the Ooze and the Witness and then untap Wrath of God. Alright, fair enough. And then the hope is that they're one card in hand and the card they draw isn't too scary. Could also cycle the Cryptic Command, bouncing the Forest, which does set our opponent back quite a bit on mana. Don't hate that, since we otherwise risk getting stuck with too many cards in hand and not being able to convert them. And we also do want to make sure we keep hitting our land drops. Pick up a Logic Knot. Let's untap, pick up a Negate, and just cast Wrath. Poon can eat up two of our cars in the graveyard. We should be in a pretty okay spot, depending on what our opponent resolves. If they resolve with a Blood Moon, for example, then things could get out of hand. Instead, it's just a Kitchen Finks. That's acceptable. Alright, so now we have Lightning Helix and Logic Knot up. I guess we can also afford to play Serum Visions now. And yeah, those are both good. Top Path, Top Cryptic. Play Mountain, say go. And we'll Lightning Helix the Kitchen Things here. And then when it attacks as a 2 1, we could also block with the Secured Waste token, for example. Alright, that's on top. Say go. Suppose we could also take the two damage from Kitchen Things just to play it safe, have Cryptic up, and then end of turn secure the waste for a bunch. Another Runic Armasaur. Could also Snapcaster Wrath of God. Sure. I guess that's reasonable. Although we do know that we have a Path to Exile coming up, which does answer the Armasaur pretty well. So I don't think that's actually necessary to Wrath. So then I would rather just secure the waste for a bunch here. And then we can path Armasaur and go on the beatdown plan with our tokens. So let's path the Armasaur. And then we get to attack for four while keeping up a bunch of counter spells with her opponents only having one card in hand. So 
think this game should be in hand. Garak Wildspeaker is worthy of a negate. This keeps up a logic knot, just in case. And then I'll field of ruin the Nykthos end of turn. Although I suppose our opponent could have a second copy in hand as well. But we just want to fix our mana a little bit. Get an extra island. Untap. And yeah, this cryptic should lock things up. Opponent down to 14. Can also snapcaster helix end of turn. That's 5 more damage. And Garak Relentless is worthy of a counter draw. And pick up a Lightning Bolt. Don't think we need to fire it off quite yet. So we have 9 points of burn that we can fire off this turn, so not quite enough. And alright, that does it, so on to game 2 against a Green Devotion ramp deck. So what do we want to sideboard? Tapping Sphere doesn't stop Utopia Sprawl. Uh, opponent was pretty creature heavy, so I don't think we need to second the gate. Don't hate Cleek, don't hate Lara, don't hate Elspeth. Those are the main considerations. Um, could also make an argument for Static Caster to kill Arbor Elf and other mana creatures. So I think we bring these in and can probably afford to take out some Lightning Helixes. Shave a Cryptic Command and that should be enough. Keep in the one negate for potential planeswalkers or sideboard cards. Can also get a Blood Moon early. Although we haven't seen the Blood Moon yet, if we do see Blood Moon, then we can also make a case for bringing in Celestial Purge or Wear Tear. This hand seems acceptable. Turn one Utopia Sprawl. So we'll just Serum Visions. Hope to dodge Blood Moon. Suppose we could have fetched a basic island, but we may need the Flood Strand to get white. So do we keep the second Serum Visions? Definitely want to Sulphur Falls. So we'll top Sulphur Falls and put Serum Visions on top of that. Alright, there's an Arbor Elf. So we definitely want to kill the Arbor Elf with our Lightning Bolt. But because we want to draw the Sulphur Falls, things get a little awkward. Since if we fetch first to get, let's say, Hallowed Fountain for Serum Visions, then we shuffle away the Sulphur Falls. I guess we could still... Serum Visions first to draw the Sulphur Falls and then the Scry probably doesn't matter since we're fetching. Let's fetch and then we need to get a white red land. So Sacred Foundry. So we can bolt Elf while still having search for white mana. Of course now we're pretty weak to Blood Moon but they didn't just slam it on turn 2 here so I guess they also didn't have the red mana to cast it, so they could still play it here. Nope, instead a tap, stomping ground. In two, Eternal Witness, getting back. Hopefully Arbor Elf. Nope, goes for the Windswept Heath. Alright, still fine. So now we can Electrolyze the Witness. Hope to dodge Acidic Slime. I'll take the two from the Witness just to make our opponent respect the counter spell. Think we can afford to take the two just to represent having something and hopefully the opponent doesn't play their best card and instead it's a primal command bouncing our land and then searching for a creature yeah that's a problem so we can float this for mana let the primal command resolve this doesn't give the opponent info that we have electrolytes coming up opponent gets acidic slime yep so they're full on on the land destruction plan here so one on one, draw our Sacred Foundry, untap, and Flow Strand. Could also play Ascanta to bait out the Acidic Slime on the Ascanta, although I kind of want to keep the Ascanta, so maybe that's not such a good idea. So let's just play the Flow Strand, say go. Now our opponent has to target one of our Sulphur Falls or Canal instead. And then we can Snapcaster Bolt a Slime. So there's a Slime. Target Spar Bluff. We'll make a blue. We'll fetch 
probably Hallowed Fountain just to make sure we don't get taken off of a color. And then we can Snapcaster and then Bolt to get rid of the ooze and get some pressure going. And then we can untap and play a Skanta, which can also provide an extra mana source. Alright, Colonnade works. So now we get to Colonnade a Skanta, get in for two. Hope they're out of uh, big threats. There's Nykthos, only one green devotion at the moment. Into Witness, getting back Acidic Slime. Is my guess. I guess he could also go for the Primal Command. Nope, Witness for a Witness. So our opponent's in the Witness Protection Program. And they can use Nykthos to make green mana so they can cast the other Witness right now. That's fine, given the Supreme Verdict and Secure in hand. Question is, what do they get now? Since Acidic Slime can both blow up Ascanta as an enchantment and it transform the Ascanta, so we kind of need to find a counterspell right now. Wrath of God can go to the graveyard, and I'll transform Ascanta. I will draw a path to exile, so not quite. I think we just play Tapped Foundry, say go. Opponent's gonna Acidic Slime or Ascanta, we can activate it, untap and Supreme Verdict. I guess they get to make quite a bit of mana here, thanks to Nykthos. So they might double spell us. So there's Slime. We'll activate. And miss, that's unfortunate. Double Snapcaster click. So our best hope is that our opponent plays a creature that dies to Supreme Verdict. And then we might be able to stabilize. And no attacks with the Witnesses. And a bolt to draw. Yeah, I think we're pretty locked into playing Supreme Verdict. So might as well attack for two. And get in those two three points of damage, which opponent could call or bluff, but most likely they just take it. Verdict, and then hope that uh, they don't have any great leftovers. What is this? Beast Within on our Colonnade, which now also our beast token dies. Yeah, that was a pretty nice play. It leaves us with three lands. Is this another witness? Nope, kitchen things. Alright, that's okay. Flood strand is good. So, let's say go. Probably pathing the things. Might actually want to path now or in their upkeep for uh, Nykthos purposes. Yeah, I could buy that. Could have also done it in draw step since we kind of want the opponent to draw basic lands. So maybe draw step was the correct timing there. If we don't want them to use Nykthos. Alpine Moon. Sure. Probably naming Colonnade. Surprised they brought this in. I guess they could also name Oscanta. But one's already gone. And they name Field of Ruin instead. Just have the one copy. So yeah, I don't think our opponent should have brought in Alpine Moon for this matchup. At this point, I doubt our opponents playing Blood Moons in their deck. So I'm just going to fetch a dual land here. Probably Hallowed Fountain. Alright, get to Serum Visions. And don't need either of those. And now we can secure end of turn if we want to for three, or we can wait till we can do it for more. Alright, opponent's gonna get the Eternal Witness chain going again. That's annoying. And there's not much we can do about this, except for maybe pathing the Witnesses. At least they trade for the Secured Ways, but the problem is that they are gonna get back something like an Acidic Slime by the end of this. Alright, so they can't cast the third Witness at the moment. Let's fetch another Dual Land. Alright, Snapcaster Mage. Interesting. So can Snapcaster Electrolyze, but I think we wait for them to play their Witness first, otherwise they just get the Witness loop going again. So it doesn't mean we have to take four, or do we just secure the Wastes for four and then block both Witnesses? Sure. Since taking four seems bad. And this way we give ourselves a few more options with the Snapcaster Mage.
Another Utopia Sprawl. Their opponent has Witness in hand. Which is probably going to get back another Witness. Opponent is one mana short of playing Witness and then using Nykthos. So they might use Nykthos first and then be able to play both Witnesses. So Witness number two gets back Witness number three. And let's see what Witness number three gets. And gets Primal Command. All right. And the Lyra Dawnbringer is interesting, but now their opponent has Primal Command in hand. I don't know if it's such a great idea to play the Lyra here. It's unfortunate that we haven't found any counter spells in this game, since otherwise we could Snapcaster get back a counter spell. So I think for now we say go, and hope that the Primal Command is not too bad. I guess they probably get the fourth witness first with the Primal Command and then loop that. No, opponent does nothing. Interesting. So they're maybe respecting a counter spell. Well, in that case, I'm gonna Snapcaster electrolyze two of the witnesses and try and go on the beatdown. Opponent's gonna make a ton of mana. What do they have at instant speed? Is it like a court of calling? Yep, court for two. Not sure what that could be. Maybe a scavenging ooze. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Ooze, Exile, Electrolyze. Not much we can do about that one. Well, if Ooze was the best thing our opponent could get, then I guess we might still have a shot. But again, we need to find an answer to Primal Command. So end of turn, I'll path the Ooze. Let the opponent exile a bunch more stuff. Alright, picked up an Ascanta. I think we play Ascanta over Lyra here. Keep up bolts just in case. Could attack with the Snapcaster, but kind of want to keep it on defense since can't really afford to take a bunch of damage when we're at 10. Even though our opponent does value their witnesses pretty highly. So here comes Primeval Titan of all things. Yep. I'm guessing they have a Kassig Wolfron in their deck somewhere. So now Lyra is definitely not going to be good enough. And there's Craterhoof Behemoth as a finisher. Alright, so that's going to be game. Alright, so how do we want to sideboard? Kind of missed the Cryptic. And do we still want two Wraths? Maybe we can go down to one Wrath. Elspeth would have been good. Lyra would have been okay. So I think we just bring back the Cryptic Command. Now that we're on the play. I guess Static Caster could also be great against Witness. So maybe we actually bring in the Static Caster instead of Cryptic Command. Could see that. Alright, would like to be on the play. Oof, double Ascanta, Island Serum Visions. It's a rough one. I think this is borderline. But on the play, it's a little sketchy. I think we go to 6. Ah, I'll keep this. And keep the bolt on top. And then we'll take two. And Serum Visions. Still haven't seen any Blood Moons from the opponent, so I'm gonna assume they don't have them. And Cryptic seems good, Colonnade seems okay. I guess we can keep the Colonnade on top and then still decide whether or not we want to fetch to shuffle it away. And turn one Birds, which we're gonna Bolt. So I think we're fine drawing the Colonnade. Opponent is a land destruction based deck after all, so Getting one too many lands is pretty good, actually. And then we'll keep the other bolt, I think. Take two. Bolt a bird. Say go. Turn to Scavenging Ooze. I'm gonna get bolted. Uh, since, let's see, what scary three drops can our opponent have? Let's say they play Witness. I don't really want to give them back the Ooze. So I think we just play a tapped Colonnade. Say go. And then uh, maybe take two from the ooze and then bolt it end of turn. And there's Runic Armasaur. I guess we maybe should have fetched first. Either way, that resolves. And we'll bolt the ooze. And pick up Sulphur Falls. Alright. Get to play that, keep up Cryptic. 
maybe counterbalance the Armosaur so we can fetch without giving them a card, but Armosaur gets him for two. Utopia Sprawl, that's fine. And Witness, we're gonna counter. So we can counter draw or we can counter bounce the Armosaur so we can fetch without giving them a card. I think we counter draw. I'm sure we can find a removal spell for the Armosaur at some point and then just crack all our fetches. And there's a path, perfect. Let's play a fetch land, say go. All path Armosaur. And Garrick Wildspeaker, yep. So we can just electrolyze Garrick to kill it. So I think we'll fetch first. Guess we could play around Blood Moon at this point. So I'll get an island. And then electrolyze Garrick. Alright, Snapcaster is a good one. And Ascanta is a good one too. So let's fetch. Planes, play Ascanta, say go. I'll take three from the beast. Think we keep Snapcaster in hand for Cryptic. And yeah, we'll keep the path. Transform Ascanta. So now we have path to answer the beast and Snapcaster Cryptic at the ready. Scavenging Ooze is going to get countered. So we'll counter draw the ooze. And then path beast. Alright, let's hope our opponent's last card is not too scary. Don't play anything second main. So we could go on a beat down plan with Celestial Colonnade, but Cleek is nice, so now we can Cleek plus Ascanta. I think that beats playing uh, or activating the Colonnade. So let's get in for two. And then draw step, click our opponent. And they have Behemoth and Garrick. So Behemoth, they can almost cast here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Would be a five, five with haste. That's actually kind of a problem. So I think we have to take the Behemoth and leave them with Garrick. And they picked up a Kassig Wolfron which is beatable. So we get to Ascanta end of turn here. Not gonna fetch since the one damage could matter and we don't need the land right now. So our opponent makes a beast which they can wolf for next turn. So just need to find an answer for the beast token here. And Lightning Bolt will do. Untap. Logic Knot is good insurance so let's bolt the beast. Since I don't think we can deal lethal, seven... No, we're a few points short of killing our opponent with damage. And then I prefer keeping up Ascanta and Logic Knot over activating Colonnade. So this attacks Garrick, this attacks our opponent. And then we have Logic Knot to counter their next threat. And Ascanta to find more answers. And we should be able to close out this game in a turn or two. Opponent says go, activate Ascanta. And find the ferry and secure the waste. Secure the waste will do. And untap. Could have secured for two end of turn there. Five, six, seven, eleven. Yeah, we could have maybe attacked for lethal here had we cast secure for two end of turn. But that did mean tapping out. So I think playing it safe is fine. Attack for five. And then we can secure for a bunch end of turn while keeping up Logic Knot. And that does it. Awesome. So managed to be the Red Green Devotion. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel as well as getting us closer to our goals where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series so if you want to see more content patreon is the place to go.